let's use our acid-base skills to solve a seemingly innocuous looking problem, but one that you will find is actually quite serious. Let's look at the case of a patient with a pH of 7.40, a PCO2 of 40, and a bicarb of 24. All, of course, normal exactly what we would like. So let's try to tear this apart using our method. First, the clinical information. I'm not giving you any. Second, the pH. Do we have an acidemia? Or an alkalemia? We have neither, so you're stuck there as well. Third, what's the primary acid-base disturbance? Um, well, our pH is normal, so we don't have one. Or we can't say that we have one. Okay, well, what's the compensation? Uh, well, there is none because the PCO2 is normal and the bicarb is normal. So we're a little stuck here. This doesn't give us any information because I didn't give you any. It's not acidemia or alkalemia. We don't know what the primary problem is and so we don't have any compensation. Well it seems like my method isn't going to be very helpful. Hmm. Well let's look at our next step. Our next step is our anion gap. It seems to me the anion gap might be important. Of course that's why I left it out. So let's look at this Chem 7. The patient has a sodium of 145, has a chloride of 96, and a bicarb of 24 as above. Hmm. So what is our anion gap? Our anion gap is 25, right? 145 minus 96 plus 24 equals 25. So, by definition, we have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, also known as a HAGMA. Okay, well, let's go on to our sixth step. And our sixth step, of course, is our delta-delta. And the delta-delta is something that everybody always has trouble with, but it's actually really simple. So the delta-delta is the change in anion gap over the change in bicarb. If we have a patient who has an anion gap of 25, I would expect the patient's bicarb to be much lower than 24. And the delta-delta will help us figure this out. Okay. So in terms of the delta-delta, the way to figure it out is what we want is we want the change in anion gap. So that's the anion gap that we have, 25, less 10, which is considered normal, over the change in bicarb. So the change in bicarb is 24, which is normal, less the bicarb that we have, which in this case is 24. If we do our delta delta, in this particular case, it's 15 over, infin over 0, which is infinity. Normally, with an anion gap, a one increase in anion gap increase in anion gap by 1 should have a decrease in bicarb approximately by 1 and so we should expect this ratio 
this ratio should be normal delta delta should be between one and two. And this is definitely greater than two. Now if we think about it, we look at this bicarb. We look at this anion gap. This anion gap is fifteen above what it should be. This bicarb is should be fifteen below twenty four. So we should be our bicarb should be nine. And if our bicarb should be nine and it's actually twenty four, then we have more bicarb than we're supposed to have. So more more bicarb than we're supposed to. What situation is that? That's a metabolic alkalosis. Okay, so in this particular case we have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. How do we know that? The anion gap is above 20. We have a metabolic alkalosis. How do we know that? Because of our delta delta arrangement tells us that this bicarb, this bicarb of 24 is much much higher than it should be with an anion gap of 25. And so this particular patient who has, going back to the top, a pH of 7.4, PCO2 of 40, and a bicarb of 24, actually has a high anion gap metabolic acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. How is this possible? Well, it's easy. You have a patient who's vomiting profusely, creates a metabolic alkalosis. That particular patient becomes so volume depleted that they develop lactic acidosis, leading to a metabolic acidosis. So a seemingly innocuous pH, normal, PCO2, normal, bicarb, normal, can create a very significant acid-base disturbance that involves high anion gap metabolic acidosis and a metabolic, metabolic alkalosis. If you follow these particular steps in terms of the clinical stem, the pH, the primary, compensation, anion gap, and most importantly, the delta-delta.